Oh, wow, that's simple. That's pretty simple. Yeah, the uh, atomic number tells you the number of protons and uh, neutrons. All right, how many neutrons does a stable isotope of iron have? Boy, I don't know why that would be any different, but um, let me, I'm going to go out to the wonderful internet and see if that would be any different, because I don't know why it would be. Um, I'll Google, I'm going to search it up too. The isotope of an iron. I don't, uh, I don't really know the answer to this because it, because it, it's sort of specific to, or there, there's, there's several isotopes that iron can create. Most of them can create more than one isotope. Um, I don't know why it would be any different than the previous answer, I guess. Um, so I would recommend going with just 26 neutrons. Um, but you're welcome to change that. Now the electron's a little bit more complicated. Uh, it's based on um, well, it's it's also twenty six. I mean, that's that's what I don't quite understand um, where they're going at because um, it's got to match the uh, the protons. Now, here's the other thing we could do here. We were doing some previous calculations where the neutrons plus the protons equals the atomic mass unit, which is 56. So we could right. say that it's 30 neutrons. I mean, maybe you're seeing that. I, I don't know. I So those are kind of the best, best answers. Um, all right. So figure out which element of periodicity exists most abundantly of an isotope. This is a definition. I don't know what it is. Um, mm. I guess it's hydrogen. I don't know. I guess we. I guess I need to go look at your uh, lesson. So let me go do that. Sorry, I've way All too. All right, just let me know if you need the password again. Sure, I probably do because I don't think it's. I don't think it's saving. Um, let's take a look here. Well, I'll send you the password in the chat just in case if you need it. Yeah, that would be that would be great. So, or or it was in the video. That's right. This is a video. <laughs> oh yeah, you logged in. Well, this is just a. We'll see if this actually holds. Um, all right, well, so I got the password ready in case you need thank it. Thank you, thank you. All right, isotopes. So I'm, I'm just looking for, yeah. Um, Oh, how would you, it just says, how would you figure out? It's not actually asking you to determine it. I misread that. Uh, that's that's a common thing to do here. So let's go back to the other the other screen there. This is straight from the, uh, the notes here. Let me go and find it and I'll snip it in. Um, isotope. Um, No, oh, it doesn't. It doesn't actually tell you. Okay. Huh. So I'm still not seeing like an answer that just that that's like uh, complete in terms of the this. Um, but it's it's uh, it's comparing. This is the, uh, I mean, this is the the Google answer here. Let me snip this in.
All right, so here's the answer. The most common isotopes can be found by rounding the atomic weight. Oh, it's, oh, it's doing this again. So let me do it this way. On the periodic table to the nearest whole uh, whole number. So that's, uh, and I guess I guess that would be the answer here is, but we should rewrite this. I mean, we couldn't just copy and paste from the internet. Right. All right. Let me just so could you uh, could you yeah could you give that a try there? I mean it's it's maybe just putting putting uh just changing the order or something like that. All right, I'm gonna try my best to rewrite this. I rewrote it. I think it, it will work. Yeah. Really, it will work. Right. Yeah, and so it, and so th this is good enough. I mean, we just we just need something to go in there. Sometimes you're just you're just trying to close out a lot, which is where we're at. Um. All right. So we go to the if it says find the element that would need one more electron to fill its second electron shell. So the first electron shell is two two numbers. And so uh, the next electron shell is eight. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that gets you to seven. Three to nine is seven. So neon is the second one, second shell that's filled. So fluorine, fluorine needs one more electron to fill its, its second shell. And if you didn't get all that, that's okay. Yeah, kind right. of. So, so now the third shell. Find the element with two electrons. It's third. Find the element with two electrons. Third shell. So helium and neon have their first two shells completely filled. Argon has its third shell completely filled. So you back you back off of it. Make sure you're still seeing this. Yeah, you back off it over here. So Na or sodium needs to lose one electron. Mg needs to lose two electrons in its third shell. You can think of the, the rows kind of as shells. So Mg or magnesium is the one that uh, needs to lose. All right. How many more electrons would nitrogen N need to fill its outer shell? If we go back, we got to find nitrogen. There's nitrogen right there. We want to go to the right. So you need to add one, add two, add three to get to and neon. So you'd want to add three electrons. Or typically it's stated as gaining gaining three electrons. I see. Science is interesting. Should I write anything else or should I? Nope, that's it. That's totally it. So I'm I'm gonna save this. Um and, and that's it for this lesson. You're you're welcome to send over something else. Maybe you already have. I can get it. Yes, uh, I did. You did. Okay. Let me uh
I sent get you this. lesson four in physical science, and um, um, after we are able to finish lesson four, I was wondering if we could do some English because um, if we have time, by the way, because we got a revision. Absolutely, absolutely. So give yeah. me just a moment here to get set up for this next lesson. Okay. This one's got this formatting problem again. Um, I'm gonna grab, I'm just gonna start grabbing it from the uh, the actual lesson. I think that'll be better here anyway. Um, but uh, if you can always still send it over, it's just this one didn't format well. So um, let me make sure I can get it, get at it here. All right, course dashboard. All right, I was able to log in. You said lesson five, properties of matter. Is that right, or are we on lesson four? We finished lesson four, so we're on lesson five. Five, all right. And uh, always, again, like there's a video here that's always good to watch ahead of time. Uh, yes. Uh, here we go. All right, so yeah, there's a, just a tiny bit of... Uh, stuff here let me, let me try to do it as we go all right so let me share my screen why am i starting my video Boy, I'm, I'm all over the place today okay. so question number one says find out some of the chemical properties of aluminum and iron and drive them here so the, i mean this is a straight lookup why don't you go to the internet look up some properties and write something out here for this and the, or go to your lesson, although I don't think your lesson had anything on on them. But chemical properties, just to be clear here, they uh, they change the identity of matter. Uh, so things that like burn or change color um, are typically chemical properties. Gotcha. So go ahead and just, and you can just search for that. I mean, it'll it'll give you it'll give you. Um, I'm sure a list pretty quickly there. All right, question five. Six. <clears throat> Oh boy, another big one. Right, here it is. Can you scroll up to question one, please? I just want to make sure um, that I'm searching everything correctly. Yeah, sorry, back in the lesson looking up stuff. Okay, describe some of the chemical properties of aluminum and iron, which we're kind of looking at. A table actually works really well here. I don't know if this was an issue last time you, um, you know, you, you did this, but we can go, you know, we can go aluminum and iron. We can mm -hmm. start adding some of those in or do it many other ways. That's uh, just one idea. Okay, 
um chemical properties though the what I'm googling it just shows that like the atomic number atomic mass I don't so think the, that's the, a chemical the, property yeah so so the, the the right search here is uh is chemical properties of aluminum that would be the right and I put that in the chat there that's kind of the most direct you know we want this is what we want if that doesn't work the next thing to do is to go just find a general sort of resource on aluminum, which I'll help you find, and then look for a, a, a place where it gives the the um, properties. And I mean, tr truly, Wikipedia is like a good place for that, even though it got such a bad rap. Back oh, yeah. Hmm, all right, I'm searching. It says here with aluminum, they uses their reactivity with water, with acid. Let me let me go out to the internet here and see if I can find something that will help help you figure this out. Sometimes it's just about finding the right the right resource that gives you um, what you want. Have you found anything yet, or should I also well, keep? Well, I mean, this this resource is a good one for uh, for other things. I'll put drops in the chat. Um, and and it's uh, it's by aluminum, so. All right, I uh, let's um oh, we're really struggling with this one. Um well, we should just come back to it. Sure, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. I think actually going on to question 3 will will help actually help to answer this. So, um All right. So uh, let's look at where you question three. It says, imagine you want to create an art and craft project to be displayed in your garden. If you have a choice to use either aluminum or iron for this project, which would you choose? And this is a little bit of real life. You know, do you know when iron is used? Can you think of any examples of when iron or aluminum are used in your life? Okay. Iron is used like for metal purposes. They're but they're both metals. They're both yeah. metals. So you gotta, be, you gotta be more clear clear than hmm. um, okay. 
Okay, hold on. Um, I'm thinking right now. It's used for engineering. It's used to create. Okay, so, so the, the so uh, one of the places I use aluminum is in my kitchen. Uh, you heard of aluminum foil? I was just about to mention that. I was like, wait, aluminum foil. Okay, so what is the aluminum foil used for? It's for use. It's used to like preserve food. Um, so, so are you, you you cover it and it it yeah. it maintains the heat. Um, what do you notice about the physical? property of of it um it's like, very it? lightweight and it's easy to scrunch up go. okay so there we go so it's it's lightweight it's a uh, thin it's bendable what is true of iron sort of iron the opposite. heavy and it's hard to bend yeah okay um so the other thing with with uh so a chemical property of aluminum is that, um, and I don't know if you've experienced this, but if you, if if it's hot, but then you you remove the heat from aluminum, do you know if it stays hot or not? Um, I think I've done this. Like, do you mean the food and the foil? Yeah. Um, I I've never had food in aluminum foil that's been hot before. <laughs> but I feel like it would be instead of it being super duper hot, it would be like room temperature, maybe. So, so it does not, it does not um, keep the heat. Uh, yeah. So that and that's it, it a good cools thing. down over time. Well, it cools quickly. You want to say they all cool over time. I mean, time is relative, right? It could be a minute, it could be an hour, it could be a week. Um, iron, on the other end, does it cool quickly? No. Wasn't iron used by people that like blacksmiths to make weapons and stuff and for horseshoes? Sure. I mean, it's used in modern days as well. Um, yeah. So it retains heat. Um, it's very sturdy, uh, you can say. Okay. Um, all right. So we've, we've kind of talked a little bit about this. I don't think this is great, but this is good enough here. So if you're, imagine you're going to put something in your yard outside, would you use iron or aluminum and why? I would iron use aluminum because it's, like you said, lightweight, thin, and bendable. You can like make a lot of stuff with it. You can okay, bend what it happens, you what happens outside? What are some of the things you have to consider when you're outside? Wind. Okay. The so temperature how will, occasionally. How will wind affect aluminum? It can blow it down. Yes. Will wind blow down iron? No. Okay. What other things happen when you're outside? Hmm. It can rain. Okay. So it, it's got to be able to resist, you know, water and heat and other things. So iron would be... So iron's the better choice. And you, and you see these, uh, you actually see these if you drive around. People have uh, uh, yard art. Um, all right. So the... Uh, uh, you've got to put together a sentence now that says, you know, uh, an art project, you know, and you want to use these words, you know, uh, you can say, if I were to create an art and craft project to be displayed in the garden, like you're just rewriting that I would use iron because, and you would list some of the properties and then you might, you know, might add in that it's more resistant to the weather outside. Mm-hmm. All right, I will write something for you.
So um, should I say that the iron will last longer or it will? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Um, here's what I wrote. Yes. Okay. I, one of the things you're you're missing is the listing of the properties. Either the, oh, the yeah. physical properties is probably a good one. All right. I so I should I'm gonna just copy this down and write how iron can stand is um. Harder to use, but it's but it's heavy and can bend and stuff like that stuff, right? Uh, yeah. Any anything we've got listed here, or other things that come gotcha. to mind? All right, uh, here's what I have written down. But so the uh, the properties should come before you for your your explanation of it. So, uh, so that it would be better to say uh, like y y you want to say why my garden, period. Uh, if I were creating our project to be displayed in my garden. Uh, I would use iron, like you wrote down there. Iron can be harder to use and is really heavy. I mean, so that almost sounds negative. Um, like the way the way that that's written. Um, but, but so you got to add something in here. But it will last longer and can handle different types of temperature and weather. Last as as long. Okay, good. All right, so. Um, List and define four more physical properties not mentioned above. So um, this was kind of straight out of your lesson. Your lesson, your lesson asks, uh, has, let me see if they have physical properties listed on there. Physical properties. All right, yes. So if you go to your lesson, I'll, I'll just share the screen there. Okay. Here are the physical properties. So color, color is a physical property. So color. Length is a physical property. Mass is a physical property. Temperature is a physical property, okay? So I would, and then boiling point, melting point, solubility, viscosity, conductivity, uh, density, so you have to choose four of these and then just look for definitions of them. And then you can't say mass is how much something weighs, uh, but you can be you can be like like I'll give an example like for color you can say color color uh, um, the, the color is uh, well that was a little bit harder I mean I mean you could say length 
is uh, something that can be measured. Sometimes these are hard to define. Uh, Temperature is not too bad to define. Boiling point is actually already defined. Melting point as well. But you got to pick four of those from the list and define gotcha. them. So I have to choose one of these. Four. You have to choose four of them and define them. Okay. Well, I can talk about the the freezing point. Uh, I okay. can talk like for iron, right? I have to talk about this for iron. No, no. I think I think it's just in general. It's like 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 what I'm saying here is is if we go back to the screen, you have to say look, freezing point, the temperature at which the uh, material or solid freezes. Something like that. Okay. Um. Let's see. But let me check at the the lesson as well. I can. I'll talk also about like temperature and I guess color as well. I can talk about that maybe. Is that okay? Does that work? Sure. Yeah. It, it, any of those? Any of those are fine. We didn't really talk about any of them, so these will all be good. Oh, okay, hold on. We have to mention four more physical properties. So those that aren't in the lesson, hold on. Oh, uh, oh, oh, you mean not mentioned above? Okay, I'm sorry. I thought it was referring to, uh, okay, that, that, that takes, that's, I apologize. I just I thought, read it. Well, let me read it here. I guess it means, I guess it means, uh, yeah. Um, you're right. Yeah, the way this is. Uh, so yeah, you can't use any of the ones that's there. So just so you want to look for a list of physical properties, and uh, use any of the ones that aren't in there. And and because of that, I'll help you define them since you, you got to look them up. Um, you could list four though. That would be okay. that would be pretty be good. What about toxicity? Uh, you know? I, I, don't, I don't know. Is that on the list? <laughs> I'm assuming there's a general list of, of physical properties. Um, so the search would just be a list of physical properties. Okay. And and I got I got a pretty big Pretty big hardness is one of them from metal hardness. <laughs> I remember yeah, that one really well. So actually, Leah, let me throw this in the chat because this actually is good because then you can define them. Um, let me go into the chat here. So this is this this search here at the top gives a list, and some of them we've already you know, talked about. But for example, volume we haven't talked about. So you can you can click on volume. And then it's got a definition right there with it. So maybe just in just a few words, it doesn't need to be. Volume is a measure of three-dimensional space, specific yes. but straight to the point. And that's it. Because of the definition, you don't have to modify it much, if at all. Hmm. Now let's see what else can we mention. 
Hmm. But I'm gonna go back and forth between the lessons to make sure that um we can mention these stuff. We can talk about um hardness and magnetism. The hardness Okay, that's is fine. in material That's good. science, hardness is a measure of resistance to localized plastic deformation by either mechanical or a dentation or abrasion. Okay. So go ahead and drop those in the chat whenever you whenever you got them. All right. I will send you um the hard was hardness one and uh anything else I could find. Okay, I found physical science um, properties that, that have not been mentioned in the lesson, so I lesson, so I think these could work. All right, I'll take a look here and then we'll uh Okay. All right, so hardness, state of matter, magnetism. You didn't do volume. Volume was the easy one. Oh, yeah. Oops. I was like, no, nah, I'm going to challenge myself. Okay. And these have been slightly rewritten. Not yet. I just wanted to show you the meanings of them. I'll like rewrite Okay. them. Yeah, I mean that's that's the that's the main part. I mean, just in just a few words, you know. Um, or you or you just shorten it so it doesn't look like a copy and paste. Like Yeah. measure of the resistance to deformation, something like that. So could you could you make a better attempt at rewording hardness? Hardness, And yeah. that's. And that's another reason why you want to pick ones that are more familiar to you. How about Um, instead of we hardness, I just do volume instead. sure, whatever you want. All right. I'll just write volume instead. Uh, volume is the easiest because everyone knows what it is. All right, there we go. Here's volume.
Okay, that's good. Uh, so got to do it for either these other three or uh, three of these other ones or come up with new ones. Same thing though. You can't, obviously can't just copy and paste, but you can shorten it so that it's it's reasonable. Yeah, that's what I did with the luster one. That's what I did. I shortened the definition because it was way okay, too so, long. Okay, so you're saying luster is okay? Down here? Yes. All right, so let me grab that. All right, we need two more. Okay, two more? Yeah. Let's see. I wish the teacher didn't give me any examples because then it would be easier. I didn't know right. area was um a physical property. Say that again. Area is a physical property. We can use that one. Uh sure. Okay, here is the area definition. Now I'm gonna look for one more. Okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the ones that, that you have here. You just have to give them a little bit of a rewrite. Yeah. I'll do, wait, we already wrote magnetism, right? Yep, yeah. Okay, cool. I need one more. Right? Any of these are fine. You just have to rewrite the ones that are not, that are not being based from the internet. I think I, that means I have to rewrite hardness and magnetism. So I can try. Just one, to, just one of them. Just one of them, four. I'll do magnetism because I want to try to shorten it a okay. little bit more. Okay. Okay, there. I did a diff. Here's one for magnetism. Okay, I mean this looks very much like a like a from the internet, but it, it, you did rewrite this. Is that is that true? Uh, no, I went. No, I tried to shorten it off of Google, but I can I can try to rewrite it again. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna do a quick search here on this. Like I like the the idea is not to completely be based. Like I get I get it that we got to do. A little bit of that, but um, all right. That yeah, that's 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 good. Okay. All right. Thank goodness that's over. We can move on to something a little more standard here. All right. Hallelujah. What is the, yeah. What is the density of one hundred grams of sodium? What is the density of one hundred twenty-eight? kilograms of of sodium so apparently this link is helpful i'm going to copy this link and see what what it's referring to and uh, go from there so sodium is na density So what I don't understand is why they're asking about two different weights, masses of of, uh, of sodium. The, the the density shouldn't matter, or the the amount that you have shouldn't matter. 
So I really don't understand this question. The uh, the density. Uh, let me. I guess. I guess I can share my screen here. It's always a guess what they actually want here. So when you go to density, when you go to when you go to density, you choose density in this table, and then you go scroll down here. There's density. The there's grams per centimeters cubed. It's 0.968 grams per centimeters cubed. And in kilograms per meter cube, it's 968. Um, now, that's just a unit thing. The density doesn't depend on how much you have. And I, I guess that's maybe the point of this question. You know, I've never, not entirely sure, but the density of sodium, same with the density of silver. And that's kind of what it's asking you down here. What what does this tell you about the correlation of density to the quantity you have of a substance? Um, the answer is that the density does not change no matter how much of the substance that you have. Okay, so the density is always going to be the same. So we're literally just looking at the density of, of these. Uh, so the density of sodium is 0 0.968 grams per centimeter cubed. Let me give you that length. Uh, I want you to look up, I'll put that in the chat here. I want you to look up the density of silver. So silver is AG. Silver is AG? Okay, cool. AG, go to AG in that, that table and scroll down to find the uh, the density, if you will. Uh, for silver, it says it's 1,490 kilograms. Yeah, we're going to use grams per centimeter, so it's 10.49 on this one. So 10.49 grams per centimeter cube. All right, so that's going to do it for us for this hour. We'll pick up on question six with some more math. We'll take a short break, and I'll see you in about 10 minutes. All right, thank you. See thank you in 10 you. minutes. See you.